Welcome to CCS TV News, where we bring you highlights and happenings from Coweta County Schools. For the week of May 22nd, I'm Dawn Revere. And I'm Josh Johnson. We've entered the last week of the school system's 2022-23 school year. We'll look at this week's year-end events, but first. At a called meeting on May 16th, the Coweta Board of Education appointed two new principals to take the place of outgoing administrators at Noonan High School and Brooks Elementary School. The board selected Dr. Jamal Kemp, principal of Lee Middle School, to serve as the new principal of Noonan High. Kemp, a 12-year educator and Coweta County School System Administrator, replaces Principal Chase Puckett, who is leaving NHS to become the Coweta School System's new Director of Instructional Services and Gifted Education. Kemp, who is a Noonan graduate himself, was introduced to Noonan High staff on Wednesday. I trust him. I've watched him. I know what he's about. He's going to do great things at Noonan High School, and I couldn't be happier for you. I couldn't be happier for Noonan High School or happier for our system. Uh, it's my pleasure this afternoon, after putting all that pressure on him, to introduce Dr. Jamal Kemp. Dr. Kemp. <laughs> First off, thank you guys for staying the ones that stayed. Thank the board also approved Dr. Jacqueline Stevens as the new principal of Brooks Elementary School. Stevens is a 22-year educator and has served as the assistant principal of Northgate High School since 2018. She replaces Dr. Jillian Andrew as principal of the North Coweta School as Andrew departs to become the school system's new director of assessment and accountability. So let me welcome Dr. Stevens. So I wasn't at all nervous until all of that. <laughs> I am so excited to be here and I have to thank all of you for the many emails that I've received today from you. So I feel so welcome already. Um, it really touched my heart for you to just reach out um, and welcome me to a new space. So I, I really appreciate that. This week's principal appointments opens the principal position at Lee Middle School. The school board is anticipated to fill that position in vacant assistant principal positions in the coming month. Earlier at its May 9th regular meeting, the Coweta Board of Education formally began the budget adoption process of the 2024 fiscal year, which begins July 1st. Board members heard details of a proposed $276 million school system budget from Assistant Superintendent Keith Chapman. At budget workshops held May 9th and again at the board's May 16th called meeting. Could you go back, uh, Mr. Chapman, and re-explain the fair share? I know you mentioned that. Just briefly what sure. that is. I know what it is, but just for the public to know what it is and why it has increased. We're required by law to levy five mills to participate in state funding. That amount is deducted from our state earnings. As our tax wealth goes up, that amount goes up, which directly reduces our state funding. The proposed budget submitted to the school board would maintain the school system's local property tax rate at 16 mills. The millage rate, which is the lowest local millage rate since the 1980s and the lowest in Coweta's region, was set last year after several rounds of deductions in the local tax rate since 2020. The school system's annual budgets are based on revenue projections following the close of this year's Georgia General Assembly session, which provides state funding for roughly half of the school system's annual budget, and projections of local revenue based on the local tax digest. Uh, I think it's a good budget. It touches a lot of areas uh, that we have been talking about over the last couple of years. Uh, that we wanted to try to touch, uh, especially uh, for employees to shore up our workforce. Uh, it certainly does that. Uh, and with, with we're, we're like everybody else. Uh, costs are going up uh, for us, and we have to take that into account. Uh, we're also, I'll remind you, we're also budgeting on a projection. Uh, we don't know what the tax digest is going to do. We don't get that information typically until about the 1st of August. The board is expected to give final approval to the new school budget in two rounds of approval this June. Now for a look ahead at events in our school system with East Coweta High student Olivia Rodriguez. Graduation ceremonies are being held during this last week of school on all three high school campuses. East Coweta High School's commencement will be held on Wednesday, May 24th at 7.30 p.m. at Shoemake Stadium. Noonan High School's commencement will be held on Thursday, May 25th at Drake Stadium. And Northgate's commencement will be held Friday, May 26th on Henry Selden Field. Attendees should check school websites for more information about parking and other end-of-the-year activities. 
Other events are coming up at the Nixon Center for Performing and Visual Arts. On June 3rd at 11 a.m., the Georgia Academy of Dance will perform The Growing Up of Annabelle Potts, an original production by art artistic director Sherry Davis, reimagined for early childhood students. The production is set to the music of Rodgers and Hammerstein, George Gershwin, and others, and features performances by Creative Movement, Combo Ballet Tap, Pre-Ballet, and Pre-Jazz students. At 6 p.m. on June 3rd, the Georgia Academy of Dance will go on stage with contemporary performances of modern, jazz, tap, hip-hop, contemporary, leaps and turns, Latin fusion, and cheer dance. And on June 4th, the Academy will perform Cinderella on stage at the Nixon Center with ballet set to music by Sergei Prokofiev. To find more information about upcoming Center Star auditions and information about tickets, showtimes, and other upcoming Center events, go to www.thenixoncenter.net. Thanks, Olivia. Also at its May 9th meeting, the school board approved an amendment to an intergovernmental agreement between Coweta County and the Coweta County school system that will allow for paving at Brooks Elementary and Eastside Elementary schools this summer. The plan for Brooks uh, was revised to delete the additional stacking lane and to add an additional exit drive uh, from the front loop. This revision reduced the cost at Brooks from $213,406.69 to $54,236.60. The board also approved a request from the City of Grantville to petition the Department of Transportation for the installation of an automatic speed camera in the Glanton Elementary School Zone on Georgia Highway 29. Mr. Chairman, a quick comment is I lived very near to that area and travel 29 uh, going over that way fairly often. And I can tell you, at least from my experience, people do not slow down. I don't go through there a lot uh, at the time, you know, school zone warnings would be, be active in the morning and in the afternoon, but some. And uh, it's a major highway, and I think people think it's, you know, free for all, 55, 65, and probably more uh, right on by the school. So uh, good move from City of Granville. Thank you. The board also recognized this year's star students from all three high schools. And middle school students from Bass Middle School were selected for All-State Band. Earlier this year were also honored by the board. Um, over 3,000 students uh, in the state of Georgia auditioned to be a part of the All-State Band for an 80-piece ensemble. So it's very rigorous. Um, they go through two audition processes where they have to prepare an etude, uh, memorize some scales, where they have to compete against students the county uh, district level, and then they, have, they get a certain score, then after that score, they go to the state level auditions and they are competing against students from the state of Georgia to be a part of this very, very prestigious ensemble. It's like the all-star team <laughs> for in, the, in the band world, right? It's our Pro Bowl for a band. I'm very proud of these two students as the only two students in Coyote County at the middle school level to represent our county at the state level. Thank you so much for recognizing them this evening. The board also recognized the Northgate High School Thespian Troop for a state level honor earlier this year. Northgate Thespian Troop 6 year 6 2 um, performed a piece for Georgia Thespians Linda P. Wise Closing Showcase. The students completed a video audition in the theater classroom, um, which is amazing because they were up against huge schools with big performance spaces, and they were in my classroom and wearing all black, and it was really phenomenal. And so on January 12th, they submitted um, a, a video, and they received overall superiors with 23 out of 24 points, which was huge. Um, and then they were one of 125 performances that received a callback at Georgia Thespian Conference out of 550 submissions. So this was massive. Um, at their live callback, they again received an overall superior score, and then they were one of 18 schools and performances that were able to perform for over 2,000 people. So this was a phenomenal experience for them, um, something that, that they have never gotten before and never received, and we are so, so, so thankful to be able to have theater in our schools and theater in our community. So thank you so much for your support. The troupe also performed for the board with a vignette from last month's Northgate production of Beauty and the Beast.
That brings us to a close for today's show. Thanks so much for joining us. CCS TV will return to bring you stories from the Coweta County School System. Now some parting thoughts from Superintendent Evan Horton. Even amid a rush of year-end events, field days and honors nights, school system is going through a time of serious reflection. We always do this time of year as we look beyond the celebrations of this year's accomplishments and consider the start of a new school term. Our school system and school board are working hard and have been for several months to prepare a new budget. The board has to approve that budget each June in preparation for the start of a new fiscal year on July the 1st. And considering that the school system employs over 3,000 people, operates more than 30 schools with many different functions to serve our 23,000 students and their families, that's never an easy task. Our teachers and administrators are already thinking of summer training and the requirements of starting back to school in August and hiring new teachers and other employees too to make sure we have high quality faculty and staff to start a fresh new school year. That extends to principals and leaders too. I've mentioned in recent weeks that we've said goodbye to several longtime system leaders who have reached the end of exceptional careers. It requires us to fill crucial school system positions with experienced school leaders and fill those positions with rising educational leaders in our community. These are never light or easy decisions. Principals are responsible for dozens, even hundreds of employees and hundreds or thousands of students and families. They have to manage a school that isn't just a significant piece of infrastructure, it's also the center in many ways of their community. They set the tone, establish the academic direction, and maintain and create the culture of their schools in many important ways. It's not a big job, it's a huge job. So I appreciate the leaders who have stepped forward to lead these schools. Jamal Kemp at Noonan High School, Jacqueline Stevens at Brooks Elementary, Hap Hines at Central Educational Center, and others. We appreciate good people taking on these roles, just as we appreciate their predecessors taking on important new roles themselves. And one last note, Central Educational Center celebrated its dual enrolled students on May 17th, and our high schools celebrate their graduates this week. To our 1,700 graduating seniors, good luck, God bless, and know that you have a whole community rooting for you. And to our whole Calvary County faculty and staff, great job and thanks for a great school year. We'll see you soon.